Good morning. Yep, I removed the clutch side casing. Reason why? Because this bike is leaking. He's leaking over here. Problem is, it's got the original gasket on there. Eh? Well, it's actually the first time I've opened the engine after six months after rebuild. But the thing is, if you tend to over tighten these things, these threads tend to strip, okay? Bike's over 10 years old, so I don't really want to talk that down any further than I can, otherwise, I'm stripping these threads. So while I was here, I decided, fuck that, let me inspect my, my clutch basket. All right. Got my clutch plates here, stainless steel plates. And you can see the glazing. It's not that I have a clutch slip right now. I mean, I just, how do I say, inspected this while I am here. And then I can show you the hillbilly way of sorting out this cuck. Oh, yeah, it's very, very difficult to do one hand. Put on a pause and I'll show you the next step. Well, as you see, I'm at my workstation on here. I got some glass here. Some of you like to put the paper here on the glass. A nice full sheet, of course. And put it on your stainless steel here. And, and uh, sand it down. This now is now 220 grit. Okay. Now, when I did the. Sorry, I just want to show you a little bit here. Over here. Now, when I did the. When I did the, the smaller bike, I did it three years ago. Three years ago, and I haven't touched it since the clutch plates. No clutch flip. That's also using the correct oil. Okay, the correct oil. Very important to use correct oil. And letting the bike warm up nicely, especially in winter. Okay. And back then, three years ago, I didn't have a fancy airs, flat surface like a glass. Okay, I ate the paper at least. There was a YouTube video that I watched before. I mean, that's how I fix my clutch plates, stainless steel plates, my clutch slip. Watching YouTube videos like everyone else, I guess. So as I said, I didn't have a piece of glass. And then sand down like that. By engineering standard point, standpoint, you think this glass is flat? This thing's not flat. Okay. It'll give you the closest possible. But uh, who says this thing's going to be flat? This thing's going to give you high spots and low spots. To me, this thing's not flat. Okay. So it says, I didn't have the piece of glass three years ago, like I have now. <laughs> I just cut myself some pieces, small pieces. And I removed the glaze. As you can see, the, you see the shiny spots. You see how this is shiny. See that? It's no good. It's not that I have clutch slip on a DRZ E right now, but it's coming. It's coming, coming very, very soon. So, as I said, I didn't have three years ago, I didn't have a piece of glass. You cut yourself some pieces of paper, 220 grit, and you sand, and you remove all the glaze, okay? You want to make this thing look like that, dull, okay? See that? Dull looking. There's no need to replace this shit. All right, you see the glaze? You want to remove this shit both sides. And there is no difference. You'll see that this is a sharp edge and there's a round edge. There is no difference which way you put this in, okay? It's not going to make any fucking difference. So if you've got a piece of glass at home, be my guest and use it. But to me, you're still going to make an even spots. Okay, there's high spots and there's low spots on here. By, an engineer, by a, how do I say, an engineering standpoint, this is not bad. So if you don't have a piece of glass, just cut yourself some pieces of paper and go right around but don't stand it for half an hour and go dig like an ass okay just go around evenly and remove all that glaze as i say that little smaller bike over there i haven't touched it three years and i use that bike six days a week six days a week yeah this has turned out to be just a an oil leak on my clutch side but this has turned out now to be like a, a fucking uh, clutch basket, clutch fucking plates, DIY jobby. 
but I'm actually glad it's actually a leak there. Otherwise, in the next few weeks, I'm likely to get a clutch slip. Nothing worse than having a fucking clutch slip when you're like 40 kilometers away from home. You know what I'm saying? So better now than a better now than later. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna put the video on pause, and I'm gonna reinstall my my stainless steel plates, and of course my clutch plates. I think I did show you the the clutch plates. They're not bent. They're not fried. Ooh, excuse me. He's still looking mighty, mighty fine. See there. These things have got another 20, 30,000 kilometers on here. See, there's no burn marks. As you can see, these, these little uh, ridges here are nice and even. Okay. That's good to me. Yeah, what turned out to be a fucking gasket maker today turned out to be the fucking clutch basket inspection on here. Well, I'm gonna put the video on pause again. Yep. It took me a whole fucking hour for these stainless steel plates. As you can see, I've removed all the, the glaze. We're 220 grit. As you can see, my hands is dirty as fuck. Okay. So, I don't have to replace these. As you can see, all the glaze is gone. Alright. Clutch slip, how's that cost? Well, I can't compare the, the little G25 to the DRZ motor. Right. The DRZ is a, is a real wheelie machine. Right. Clutch slip is caused by slipping the clutch, uh, by wheeling the damn thing. There's two ways of wheeling the DRZ. Power wheelie, when you open the throttle quick and the bike just goes up. And there's another way of doing of, of using your clutch and then your clutch slip and you wheelie the damn bike. Okay, that's also the cause of this glaze on the clutch slip on the on the stainless steel plates. Another factor is of clutch slip is using the wrong engine oil. I've only used this one. And another one is I would say winter. Not letting your engine warm up properly, especially in winter. A lot of people laugh at me because I would let my bike idle for about two or three minutes before I would actually move along. You know what I'm saying? I would let the I would let the oil warm up properly so my my clutch plates uh, can separate from my stainless steel plates, All right? Because your oil tends to get a bit tacky. Doesn't matter what type of oil you're gonna use, your clutch, your clutch plates are gonna get tacky and they won't separate properly from your stainless steel plates. Okay, so keep it in mind. So, and also is another factor is your clutch cable. How you adjust your clutch cable? Okay. So there's a number of factors for your clutch slip, but on a DRZE, I can't avoid this this glaze. <laughs> I can't expect now my my DRZE to, to go for three, four years plus minus and without a clutch slip you are going to clutch slip this bike and it is going to make a glaze on your stainless steel plates so that i can't avoid so hopefully this is going to be like a, a probably a every three or four month job either so this is lasting me now what now about six months okay so it's not too bad so so every six months i'm just going to, have to take some sandpaper 220 grit you can use a piece of glass a full piece of sheet of paper sample uh, 220 grit put it on there if you want to as I said before, this is not fucking flat. By engineering standard, this is not flat. So I just put it on here. Got myself little blockies. And I go around as quickly as possible. I don't stand there half an hour a year and dig in fucking trenches. You understand what I'm saying? I go around as quickly and as evenly as possible with a 220 grit. Both sides. All right. Uh, what else? Okay. I'll put it on pause and show you the next step. Yep, you gotta make sure your hands is clean. Wash up all this crap, okay? You do not wanna put this back in your engine like this. Let's just take some soapy water, some dirty dish, 
a washing liquid here and clean this off nicely. And then you want to take a paintbrush or whatever and just do a rag or something and just wipe this full of wipe this with some oil on there, okay? Last thing I'm gonna do is put this stuff in dry. Right, very important. You do not wanna refit this dry. I'm not saying that you must soak this like the clutch plates, you just on a steel plate. You just wanna take a, a little rag or something. Okay. I'll first dry it off. I'll first gonna dry it off, of course. Make sure my hands is clean. And then I'm gonna clean it up with some, well actually put some oil on there. Lubrication. Yeah, I'm ready for installation. Uh, my stainless steel plates are prepped, cleaned up, washed up with water, and I couldn't find a bloody fucking uh, paintbrush, so I just took my old toothbrush that I use for cleaning my motorcycles. Then you see, I've also brushed up my clutch plates with engine oil. No, and it wasn't standing out for two, three days drying out okay this has been standing there for about two hours since i've dismantled this clutch side but uh, anyways took my little toothbrush here took some engine oil and just brushed it on there okay but the thing is here when i did the rebuild also on the drz i had to inspect my clutch basket my clutch basket had a bit of grooves on here this is caused by this clutch plate when you engage in a clutch and these things separate all right from the stainless steel plates and this tends to bang on you cling 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 so when you pull in your clutch and you want to disengage your gear what happens is this starts to hook in here all right because you've got these little grooves on here so i took a file and uh i see i took a cookie pen and I lightly took a cookie pen and I marked on there. And you'll see that it's not square, it's at a bevel, okay? You gotta copy that shape. So what I did was, I lightly filed away, but I did not file away all those grooves, okay? Because there is gonna be a next time where I have to take a file again and kind of lightly remove those ridges. So when I disengage, well, I engage or disengage in the gear there, well, disengage in the gear there, like this, that these fucking teeth over here can slide freely inside the basket over here, all right? So, and then, uh, what you can see there, you can still see a few ridges over there. All right, it's not so bad. See there? Still, uh, you can still see the old ridges on there. Lightly remove those ridges with a small file. Keep in mind, if you don't know what you're doing, don't attempt this, okay? You know, let's get started here. You will see that you've got two different types of clutch plates here. You've got ones with these little uh, these little markings on you. And then you've got one without it. That one without the little, these little markings on there, you want to put that one very, very first. But also the nice thing about this uh, fucking, this uh, inner hub, this thing has got like a, how do I say, it's got like a, Expansion ring on there or something that's on a bevel that stops that stops this thing. So when you engage in a gear, it stops this thing from fucking skimming your your inner hub. This surface over here, right? Gen 25. A couple of years ago, I engaged in a the gear there, and, and this thing would not engage in a gear. That this fucking clutch plate was actually skimming the inside of my clutch clutch hub over there, that seat over there, but I see this one's got a, a nice little, let's say, like a, a beveled ring on there that stops that from rubbing against the, the inner hub, okay. So anyways, let's look for the, the clutch plate that looks totally different from others. Yeah, it's somewhere around over here. Uh, let's see, where are you now? Nope, it's not you. Yeah, it's not you, it's not, yeah, here we go. You will see that there's two different types of clutch plates on there. You'll see the, this one, you can clearly see it hasn't got any of those notches. So what we're going to do is, yeah, we're going to place this one inside here. It doesn't matter 
which side you place it in left or right, okay? There's no fucking difference. Well, you correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So it's clutch plate first, standard steel plate. Okay, uh, oops, here we got some, got some grass on there. All right, let's get it in there. I'm sorry, man, this is very, very difficult. And it doesn't matter which way you put this. Sharp edge or fucking round edge. Okay, there we go in there. Then we take a clutch plate. Uh, you'll see that, the, okay, this one's got a notch on it. So, we're gonna place it over there. Notch. Yeah. There's a notch. Okay, you see the notch over there? We take a stainless steel plate. Okay. Here we go. Doesn't matter which way you put it in. Uh, round edge or... Sorry, this is very difficult to do. Okay, you see the notch on there? Then we're gonna find another clutch plate with a notch. You'll see that there's two notches. There's a notch this side and there's a notch this side. You basically want those notches to line up. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, let's see. Notches over there. And what's going on here? Okay, there's, okay, there's a notch and there's a notch. Okay, so you basically want those notches to line up. Okay, I'm still on the same. Mm. Not the best camera work this, I know. Mm. Damn bitch. What the fuck's wrong with this thing? <clears throat> there we go, let's see. You'll see the notch, and then the notch over there is lining up. You understand what I'm saying? Take a standard steel plate, put it in. Okay. Okay, notch. Take a clutch plate. You want that notch, and that notch there to line up. Don't ask me why. I was just doing as the fucking manual tells me to do. Okay, there we go, okay. In there we go. Clutch plate again. Notch over there. Yeah, so this was all about my engine leak. Well, let's see the clutch side leak gasket. This has turned out to be a fucking, how do I say, a fucking clutch repair here. Okay. You can see the notches lining up, you understand what I'm saying? And again over there. Notch is lining up, can you see? Right. Ah. There's no ways I can expect this clutch plates to last three, four years, plus three, four minus years. Like the smaller bikes, no ways. This thing clutch slips very quickly. Oh well. As long as it's not every bloody week, I'm happy. Six pounds is cool. Okay. Here we go. And then I'm gonna put in our little uh, uh, mm, sorry for my bad camera work here. Okay, there we go. And then the very, very last one. Clutch plate. Voila. Okay. Looks easy as enough, huh? What's the next point? Next one is, yeah, we're gonna put our pressure plates, or someone wanna call it the, the boss, the boss. I put the boss. Okay, there we go, the boss. Uh, then we got our, our bloody fucking valve springs. Oh, not valve springs, sorry, man. Now clutch springs here. Yeah, I know some of you might wanna comment there and laugh at, laugh at my fucking. Quotations over here, but you guys knock yourself out. Yeah, need another one. And also, the thing is, yeah, clutch slip is also caused by the wrong tightening. You know, if you're gonna tighten these things unevenly, you're gonna have a problem with your fucking clutch plates and your stainless steel plates not separating properly. So, it's very important to tighten these in a the sequence and to tighten these on the right. Evenly, you know what I'm saying? Because now if your pressure plate is standing like this at an angle, honest, you understand what I'm saying? Your fucking clutch plates and your stainless steel plates are not going to separate properly, and then you're going to have a good. You could you could have a good chance of your your right at the back this clutch plate skimming your bloody 
your inner hub. But that's likely on but that's very highly unlikely that'll happen because I've got that little safety precaution, that little ring at the back there. That stops that very, very last one from skimming on there. But on a GN125, I was not so lucky on that one. But anyway, still it still applies basically if you don't tighten these things properly evenly. You can have your clutch plates instead of plates, plates rubbing against each other there and causing glaze on your thing there. Alright, so I'll take you to the next step. Yeah, there we go. All tightened down evenly, okay. In the crisscross pattern. Tighten down the fucking pressure plate evenly onto the inner hub. Of the clutch basket. Let's see how that thing works here. Okay, let's see now. Pulling the clutch. You see how that thing separate there? Let's see that moves. So when you disengage in that gear, each clutch plates they spin freely from the stainless steel plates. All right. If you don't tighten this stuff evenly, what's going to do is it's going to be shaving. It's, it's going to be uh, how do I say? Uh, glazing upon your stainless steel plates.